Tom thanks for having me and I, uh, I, I had to be a charm or something, I've never been here before. And that's actually a pretty cool thing to honor for having me. Um, the, it's an interesting story how we got into Ubuntu actually. Uh, I promise not to, not to spend too much, too much time on that. So back in, uh, I guess, 2002 or 2003, Mark uh, Shuttleworth came to Sun to show the new shiny Windows distribution to whatever engineers out there. Right? So Sun Microsystems, for those who don't know, it used to be a great technological company, but it's not one. So, um, right, so he came there and, and there was a bunch of engineers sitting there. And I, I was on Windows since like where, 1995, probably, or something like that. Right? So, uh, and he was like, oh, we we'll do this, we we'll do that, here are the CDs, and you know, guys, just, just, you know, come over and grab it, we will run all the over the world, and all that kind of marketing crap. And, and then, like, you know, I got so pissed off, I just stood up and said, like, you know what, there's already 362 Windows distribution in the world, why the hell do we need to get another one? And he's like, ah, yeah, it's going to be, like, better than, than others, we, we do things differently, I'm like, ah, yeah, sure. Okay. So, uh, that was 2003. 2004, I was actually switching from SUSE to Ubuntu because KT was being the, the, the crap out of my patients, right? So I switched to Ubuntu to GNOME. I loved it. In 2005, I met Mark again at the uh, uh, inaugurational summit of the Linux Foundation over as well. And uh, I came to him and said, Mark, like, remember two years ago, I was, was actually you know, a total jerk to you and stuff like that. He said, yeah. I said, like, you know, I need to apologize because Ubuntu is really the, the, the best thing ever. So, <laughs> so um, yeah, anyway. Um, as I said, I've, I've been, been around open source for a long time and uh, doing a bunch of things in this great technological company, which is no more. Um, and uh, lately I got uh, introduced to, to Ubuntu and uh, helped a little bit with the Ubuntu Big Data team with uh, Big Data, uh, well, essentially the fusion be between the how Ubuntu does, uh, how, how Juju does the, the Big Data stacks and how we do this in the, in the Apache world. Right, so and we'll talk about this a little bit and, and tell, well, highlight a little bit of the differences there and, and how the, the two paradigms got sort of merged uh, essentially. So, the idea, of course, for, for all of us here is how to solve the complexity, right? We hate complex operations, right? So, if, if you were the sysadmin or you were DevOps, and I used to be a sysadmin for a long time back on the Solaris, Solaris Network. The simpler you can do something, the more better you can do something, the better, right? So, because at the end of the day, sysadmins, uh, uh, most of us are lazy buffs, right? So we, we, we like to sit back and relax and drink beer and let like this get to do this thing, right? So, uh, but for that, for that, you have to actually work hard first, right? <laughs> Unfortunately, with the systems like uh, like Puppet and uh, Chef and, and, and Juju and whatever, and packages in Linux, making things to work the way you want them to is getting easier and easier, right? So fortunately, so but but un unfortunately, the, the world around us doesn't stop there, and it, it still evolves and it becomes more complex, right? Um, the, the the physics works even in the, the computer world, right? So unfortunately, yeah. So the entropy is, is growing as we as we speak. And the entropy essentially means complexity, and uh, the, the attempt to, to fight the complexity creates more entropy, and then, you know, the vicious cycle into the world then. So, so how we can, you know, be less miserable in the, in the meanwhile until we're dead. Um, so let's uh, take a good look at the uh, big data, the data system of big data, what it is essentially, right? So even today, um, uh, there's a bunch of Hadoop stuff, there's a bunch of the, you know, file system storage and this and that. Um, and people doing batch and you know people doing uh, other things, but it's not just 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 to do per se, right? So it's not just um, map reduce and manage the events, basically, right? So Hadoop today is is a is a huge ecosystem as as you all know, and it includes streaming, it includes uh, SQL processing, it includes in memory, it includes real time or near real time, and and all and all. But as as you know, I alluded already, or I got a cut from this, but as I said, this comes with enormous complexity because this whole open source kind of 
development, it, it's not happening by the God laid out plan, right? So it's not like we have a totally clear blueprint and we know where we're going to be tomorrow and the after and the after and the after. So it's all, it's all evolution, right? So evolution makes mistakes, of course, and a lot of things being, being dropped down and, and you know, forgotten the next day and stuff like this. And only some of the things become, uh, become the mainstream. Uh, unfortunately, in a way to become mainstream, we have to deal with a lot of this, you know, crappy and dead end fresh thread. So, and uh, um, a good example of it, and by, by, by no, no means I want to bash on the people who actually, you know, invented this, this architecture. But uh, a lambda architecture, say, right? So, people, you, you, you all know what lambda architecture is, right? It's a Okay, good. So, uh, but one architecture is a good example of, of the technology which is sort of like that end, uh, because uh, it came about out of necessity to solve an immediate problem between the, the batch processing of the historical data or lab data and uh, essentially the steaming data which is like normal day, day to day operation of, of the life around us, right? So everything around us is steam. It's not like we can quantify our lives in little chunks and, and that be the perfect model of how we live, right? So even right now I have a steam of conscious in my, in, my, in my head, which is like full of idiotic crap, but nonetheless it's not based, right? <laughs> and uh, so Lambda is trying to sort of kind of fuse these two and because tool sets for historical data processing and, and statement data processing are so different, it actually does not allow for like elegant solution that, that naturally cleanly solves the problem, but instead we have two substances, oil and water essentially, which doesn't mix well. Uh, yet in, in some combination of that, it, it helps you to solve this, this problem a little bit, right? So with, with its own negative sides and, and, and downsides, but it helps to solve it. Uh, helps to solve the problem of the process. So, and, and that's again a bit complex, right? So if you look at the Apache Storm, which, you know, it's, it's a very decent system, right? So it, it does great stuff, it does uh, 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 steam processing very efficiently and all. Uh, but the Apache Storm is a huge, humongous conglomerate of the components that should live in the cluster. And essentially, they're like layer of the zookeeper and layer of the storm nodes and layer of the Hadoop nodes for batch processing and this and that. And, and when we get this whole combined, it's a traditional nightmare, essentially, right? So nobody, nobody I, I, I'm pretty sure, in insane minds would want you to manage the, the storm cluster. Well, but people have to, right? So sometimes. Uh, and uh, where I was going with that is the, even from the 10,000 meters, right? Or uh, 30,000 30, feet, that's the blue here in the United States. So um, uh, even from that height, the, the, the second system looks very complex, right? So it's very, very, very not easy to, 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 to deal with this stuff. So and, and clearly, as anything in evolution, if there is a demand, there will be, you know, the, the supply, right? And uh, um, the, the, the initiating folks, the developers in the Apache Foundation or elsewhere, they, they came up with the idea of Apache Big Dog. And it's essentially an attempt to tame this, this complexity, right? And Apache Big Dog is uh, essentially a simple framework, right? Um, that gives you an ability to very quickly and easily iterate on the Big Dog or HR, so sorry, Big Data stack or any software stack of any complexity. We're, we're talking about Big Data right now, so let's talk about it. So you can build the packages, you can deploy the packages, you can test the packages against each other with proper configuration. Then you can rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat until you're satisfied, right? So I had the, the picture somewhere of a little curious uh, elephant holding himself by the, by the uh, tail of his trunk, so it was just perfect, you know, uh, uh, perfect representation of what the dog does with the step, right? So you just keep, keep repeating until it. Until and uh, uh, we essentially have like four, four different layers that will be parts in, in, in uh, Liptal where packaging is one of them, uh, state uh, and config management, the second one, uh, this name, we, we pop test, right? so we said we pop test. 
uh, in Cartesian as well. Uh, this is the uh, so sorry, the problem the third one again public and uh, fourth one is the is the best one, right? But uh, the, the the most kind of appealing thing for me here with uh, uh, Victor and this whole idea kind of how we do this is uh, essentially that you you do control your environment, right? You do not need to rely on somebody's hearsay saying like, hey, it works with my laptop, I just you know, brought up four containers, four dockers, and it works out there, and it worked beautifully, I have no idea why it you know, doesn't work on your, you know, your data center. Well, that's exactly why, because uh, your laptop on my data center are not exactly the same thing. So you have to control the environment, you have to control the objects, and all that kind of stuff. So and it's not, it's not kind of easy to do. Um, so, and, and then most importantly, I guess, is that Big Dog is like um, a philosophy in a sense, I, I wouldn't say, because we, we were sort of trying to counterbalance balance the, the rational approach for the complex system management and, and, and creation versus empirical approach, right? And, and you can rationalize until you blew in the face that this particular piece of software will work on that rack and, and that cloud and on, on your laptop, the reality is pretty harsh and most likely <coughs> in 60% of the time, uh, namely on the cloud and in the data center, it won't work because there are some little tiny handles and knobs you forgot to turn properly. So, and only with empirical, empirical approach you can actually guarantee that you are under all these bugs and, and you know all the stuff. Works. Anyway. And, and uh, I think I, I warned somebody back at the coffee table that this, this conversation will bore you to death, so you still have time to that. Um, anyway, <laughs> um, and, and like on the, on the real surface, Big Top essentially is trying to, um, trying to go after the Debian philosophy, right? So it's essentially the distribution of the Debian philosophy. That's why I mentioned the story about Ubuntu, because Ubuntu Debian is sort of like the same, the same philosophical, philosophical approach. So we, we, we would like to think about ourselves as a, as a Debian of the big data essentially, right? So because we, we give you this distribution that, that beautifully works out of the box, well, in most cases, well, okay, in some cases. Um, and <laughs> but uh, essentially for, for the user, for the end user, you don't need to bother with, with how the game is under the hood, so it just automatically happens for So anyway, and uh, the top is, is actually a pretty, pretty big uh, project today. It's a top level project. Foundation and uh, whatever there's contributors, a bunch of contributors we're doing usually like we're trying to do about three releases a year. Normally it doesn't happen, just two two is usually the, the, the most we can manage. And uh, um, the community is, is considered the community includes a bunch of volunteers from all over because we have actually one guy who was doing like whatever twenty years ago who was doing the data and force one of the uh Commodore sixty four or Atari sixty four, I don't even remember what that kind of like, you know, Unix beard hackers just to just talk about it. So, which is great, actually, so it's, it's amazing. Uh, where the hell I have two, two slides? Oh, they're not the same. Ooh, well, okay, yeah. So, we have the stack that rules them all, so I am. Um, and, uh, but Big Top, Big Top doesn't have everything, everything, everything covered, right? So, uh, the, the, the world is so huge and, and complex that Big Top can only our this little corner here. And of course there is a bunch of things that we cannot do or we don't know how to do. And uh, namely this is the infrastructure management and uh, uh, topologies, models that, that have to be created and maintained and stuff like that. <laughs> and fortunately here comes Juju, right? So uh, I, I wouldn't bother wasting your time on talking about Juju. You all know about this. It's the last day of the conference. So, uh, but Juju is actually great because it, it completely abstracts how you sort of model your system from how the little pieces in, inside of the system would, would actually behave, right? So you can encapsulate this knowledge into the charms, and, and that's my personal sort of pet peeve, quote unquote. You can have these charms written in Python voice for like six days in a row explaining how to set up the node and configure the voice, right? When I first time see it, I'm like, what the hell? Like, why, why are you doing this? 
but the concept was great. Right? <laughs> and uh, um, if you get rid of this logic inside of the charms, or at least you replace this logic inside of the charms with uh, a proper state management approach, right? So basically, instead of writing these prescriptive Python statements or, or after these skull statements or whatever it is, explaining how to stand up a particular system somewhere and replace it with uh, uh, state state management like chef puppet whatever it is so to basically say okay so here's my charm i run on this node with this configuration magically five minutes later boom the state has been reached and the state is exactly what it expected to right and if, if i will run it again the state will be again the same so my operation is like important so i can run it till it blue in the face i won't break it and if i broke anything i will run it again right so and the state will be still great right so now in practice Getting there is not that easy because somebody has to know about this operational little tiny team detail. Right? So somebody has to know what kind of port has to be open on the on the name node side and how the, the data node protocol works with the data node and what kind of security should be implied if you are in the whatever uh, uh, on premise data center or in the cloud and how to configure the particular VLANs and this and that and a bunch of this stuff, right? And of course we cannot be the experts in everything, so we, we can only do things that we, you know, like. Right? And uh, uh, say it would be quite fair to to go into the Ubuntu Juju community and say, like, guys, you're doing the wrong thing with with name or those Spark or whatever it is, because that's how it should be done. Right? So and uh, that the, the the way it should be done has been developed by the by the experts in the, the Spark community. And was, was not in the, uh, in the space. But those experts are not the part of the Jewish Japanese community, right? So the, the, the thing is not clear in the same, the same time space. So, and uh, uh, fortunately, with this whole kind of big top idea where you can separate the layers of the packages and the repositories from the operational knowledge and the config of the management and the tests. So now you can say, you know what? Um, Let's do something like this. So boom, here's my packages. Here's the big top, big top raise packages. Awesome, right? So we have the repository, everyone can install from it. Great. So what else we do? We do pocket recipes, right? So pocket recipes encapsulate this particular intimate knowledge about the name node and Spark Master and, and Yarn and, and Hive and what's not page based. Um, shouldn't be shouldn't be mentioned for, for the night time. But uh, uh, we have them, um, and they, they sort of stand alone, right? So you can just apply them and get the state to the right, to the right one. So what else we have? We have the configuration templates, because we know what particular tweaks needs to be done for the resource manager, so it doesn't follow your cluster or, or works at all, right? So, um, and uh, that's all great, but now, so what you can do, you can run puppet apply on top of this. Let's step back a little bit. You can run a puppet apply on those on those three, right? and then you get yourself a little cluster, right? But what about the model and the topology, right? So how you know which pieces will go where, right? So fortunately, there is Juju, and what Juju does it great uh, uh, grabs these 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 charms, and there will be like a charm per component essentially in the in the Hadoop stack or in the big data stack. So if there is high package and have component in my stack and I want to deploy it with the higher charm and the same for Apache Ignite and the same for, for, for the rest of it. So then Juju will help me to essentially combine all these pieces together. Right? So here's my packages uh, with the appropriate charms, here's my, my recipes, here's my configuration files. Now we will add this this little tiny bit of the secret source called models, right? And then we we'll all orchestrate the hell out of it and give it uh, uh, the right? So that's essentially like how we get from the bits and pieces representing the big, big data stack into something functional which sits in the uh, in the cloud or, or on prem or whatever it is. And the beauty of it, of course, is that you essentially don't even need to bother about the knowledge about this, you know, uh, infrastructure. You don't care if this is AWS or if this is 
two different views or this you know on-prem cluster uh, in the data center, whatever it is. It, it, it magically works pretty much the same. Um, and that kind of goes like a hand in the glove with the big dog because today big dog is the foundation of every single Apache Kubernetes distribution in the world, right? including the MR, including Google implementation, and so on and so forth. So for us, it, it, this marriage is sort of very mutual. So, but, uh, like, okay, great, that was the plan, right? And uh, I'm sure you will see you remember that. Yes. So, so we will build all the packages, then I know what we're going to do, and then we'll, we'll come to the project. Um, so let's see how it works actually on the Google bit. And uh, I, I will try to make it short so we have enough time to talk. Um, so, like, Packages and charm is great, so then something happened and then we will go to the profit. And let's look at the, at the, at the, at the charts. Um, oh, sorry, this is, this is part of this. Okay, yeah, right. So let's look at the part of this. So this is essentially quite typical uh, uh, part of stuff, right? So, and uh, for, the sake of the, for the sake of the demo, for the sake of the demo uh, argument, essentially, I have cut pieces and, and beads from from here, so there's some logic in there, and there's some logic in here, so whatever. So, but it just gives you the, the understanding or sort of impression of what, what the bucket is. Right? And it's a little bit more complex than this, but not much. Right? So, and uh, we have this uh, recipe sitting in the big dog source tree, and there is sort of a certain structure and hierarchy of those, so manifest for the different components, and you, you know, can combine them in a cluster by Essentially, specific, specifying simple configuration files saying I want these components to be deployed. Right? And the way we do this without Juju manually is like you somehow magically get a bunch of nodes, right? So let's say five. Okay, so five is a bunch, right? So you get five nodes, then you distribute the puppet recipes and the standard <coughs> configuration files saying that my repository is actually sits here and these are components I want, and this is my, say, master node. Cluster, or this is the specification of the roles for each node in the cluster, so I can do it for And then once you distribute all these you know, recipes and configuration file across the nodes, you run the puppet in parallel, just do the puppet file. There is no master node, nothing because we don't know in advance the topology of the cluster. Right? So we, the best thing you can do is basically run them in parallel and wait until they come to the state, start all the demons and start talking to each other, and at this point you have to sell them. So that's, that's how we do today. That's how we do it for you. Um, so now Juju come, or comes, okay, and brought us charms. And charms, as I said, used to be like a huge, well, sort of huge, right? Not six days worth of reading of the code, but probably like a day, day and a half, right? Of the Python code that would essentially try to stand up all these components uh, and Kevin sits back there and he hates me now. So, but, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, but you would, you would like, you look at this, this Python code and you try to follow the logic and, and you know, Python stands up these things for you and stuff. So, with the charms, uh, so sorry, with the, with the big dog, name no charm is like, pretty much like that. So it's a little bit longer probably by another point in line, I don't remember exactly. But this is essentially the, the, the soul of this new chart, right? So you specify, you, you instantiate essentially a BigTop class, uh, you do some configuration, little configuration, important configuration tweaks, and then you do this trigger puppet thing, right? So and then actually that's it. Right? So that's, that's like magical. And everything simple is magical. But uh, in reality, it's a little bit more complex. So if you look into the uh, big top base chart, so the, the, the one in the first line that you instantiated there. So uh, maybe instantiation is not the right word for 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 quite a So, but anyway. So inside of it, if you look, you know, hard enough, and and puppet, uh, the, the, the sorry, the base layer for the for the big top is actually a bit complex, right? Because it needs to, to take care about the triggers and, and events and, and be active and there are some handles to be called when certain things happen in the system and what's not right. So it, it's not it's not trivial I am not trying to, to prove it here. But it's not like crazy complex, right? So 
And uh, somewhere inside of this, whatever, six, seven, ten maybe kilobytes of the uh, Python code, you would see this little two-liner uh, which says, let's go to this directory and then let's run this public right now. So if you recall just from two minutes ago, um, and I should probably give you more credit for the attention span. Sorry. So <laughs> I said that the way we, we, we stood up the cluster before Juju was just run a bunch of bucket applies in parallel, right? So Juju does exactly the same, but now we don't care about topology, we don't care about the model, the host location, whatever it is. Somehow Juju you know, gets it all and, and run this bucket apply in parallel for us, right? So all we need to say is like, I want this model and I want to scale it to 150 to right? That's it. Boom. All, all of a sudden you got yourself a huge cluster. So, but the approach is exactly, exactly the same. Puppet apply on the big top vanilla path tracing, right? No magic, no nothing, no modifications, no stuff. So it just, just does that. And uh, I'm pretty much coming to the end of my presentation and half an hour earlier as, as, as I promised. So <laughs> uh, that's, that's, that's topic is sort of near and dear to my heart because I guess uh, the collaboration of the sort, right? It's only possible in the open source. I mean, this is this is the way kind of anarchical view of the world, right? So when people just work in the hell out of, of themselves to, to do something they're interested in, and <coughs> somehow the product of their labor got combined with the labor of other people, and boom, all of a sudden we're living right world, right? So I think this is great. This is open source. So like, think for a second if. Some microsystems and Oracle will be trying to, to pull, pull out the collaboration like that, right? Just for a second, think about this. Let it, let it sink. Okay? So, uh, in, in open source, it literally happened within like a couple of weeks. <laughs> so, we, we, we met at the scale conference actually at this very hotel back in January, and we said, like, hey guys, let's, let's try to do this. Then, then some parallels were happening where it is. Two months later, we got back to the topic and said, hey, are we doing this or not? And uh, Mark actually, again, was very supportive in this, in this, in this venue. He said, hey, guys, just go, you know, go do this. And, uh, some budget, and it's not. And we spent, I don't know, like three weeks, whatever it is. The guys from the data team actually uh, they invited me for their, for their spring hackathon and it was great actually working, you know, next to each other for, for full five days and doing this, this exactly sort of thing. So we, we did this proof of concept uh, first step where we could step, still stood up the cluster using Juju and using the top package and passages with a single proof of button essentially. And then fortunately my job was, was done because the hard part came after that when all that needed to be polished and the bugs and the part recipes needed to be fixed. <laughs> but that was huge and big data team, so I don't care. <laughs> but but really I mean this is this is sort of cool because now we have Juju guys or the, the, the charter, big data charter guys contributing into a bunch of project, right? So uh, Kev was uh, made committed recently so uh, for his hard work with me. And uh, uh, we get an actually a bunch of like great, great contributions from, from the team, like fixing the public things and fixing this and fixing that. And uh, unfortunately, sometimes we, on the big top side, we sluggish a little bit reviewing their changes, right? So which I'm pretty sure they, they mad at us for, and, you know, we slow down their progress like, like crazy. But, you know, being the nice guys there are, they don't, you know, but uh, it's actually it's actually a su super 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 productive combination of, of two <laughs> uh, uh, you know doing something that essentially every single person in the world, even people who are on Windows laptops, can 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 benefit from, right? So I, I think it's awesome. Um, and I'll give you some final thoughts here, parting thoughts really. Um, like if you, it's more, more like appreciate. So if you can do everything in open source, really seriously, just if you have a way, just push your code into open source, let's, let's people see it, let's people collaborate with that. Even if it's not the best thing in the world, just push it there and, and 
you might see the, the great benefits come from just this simple act of sharing, right? So I'm, I'm sort of like a cynical guy, uh, but and I don't have actually you know role models, but I love uh, Linus Storm for what he did. And when he was a kid, he said, the real programmers don't, don't need to back up their stuff, they only put it on the FTP server and let the world copy it. So I think this is a great model of open source, just to, you know, push your stuff to the FTP server or GitHub or whatever the hell it is, uh, and let, you know, let people, people copy it. Of course, it's, it's easier to say than, than to do, because to make people copy this, it is, you know, 25 years ago, the Linux kernel was the only thing, right? So it, everyone knew about this, and there were, were no competition pretty much uh, for this uh, in the open source world. Today, you can push your project, and there will be like 16 projects alive, and you know people need to figure out actually how to to pick and choose between those those 17. But this is the topic for different discussion and how to build the community, how to make the community drive it. But the fact that you're sitting in this room actually all together makes me think that, that we already know a little bit of this, of this you know, secret technology how to do the communities, right? So do this, do this in the open source. Uh, there is no boss in the open source. There is not a single person in the open source who can tell you what to do, what the hell you should do. And you just do whatever the hell you please and you think is right, right? Or think is right for your project and the people around you. So, and keep coding. Well, for the younger kids in the audience, keep coding. This is your best resume. So forget, forget all these PDFs and uh, world, world documents, right? So just code it. <coughs> GitHub, Bitbucket, whatever. Just, you know, whatever blows your hair back. Uh, for those of you guys who still have hair, I suppose. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I'm done here. So if any questions, we'll be happy to answer. No? Super. I gotcha. Ah. How do you think for step two we can get So BigTop right now is uh, 30 plus uh, or 30 ish components, right? Uh, Charm wise, I don't think we, we do cover them all. I know that we have a bunch of the uh, JIRAs in the pipeline, which I actually I didn't even have the patches in them. And that goes back to my, my, my point that some of the committers on BigTop, I'm looking at you, Cap. 
I guess, I guess uh, it, it would be unfair to expect that all the work is going to be done by the you know, big data charmers guys, right? So the, the, the state we're trying to get into is that on top of the four layers that Victor already has, we're going to have the, the layer number five, which is exactly the model for the big data stack, and we have enough or representative enough set of the charms to, to let people actually to, you know, spin up the cluster and, and learn how to do things. And then, exactly as we do with the rest of the components in Big Talk, if somebody is interested in, say, Apache Flint, they can come and the component to, to the system. And actually adding the charm for, for a component is a way easier than adding the component to the, to the Big Talk, because you need to do, like, packages and then pop it and, and this and that. And I was looking for care for a different reason, not, not as, a, as, a, as a data, Point uh, source, but rather as a as a worker on the road, because we have a bunch of these jitters and Kevin being a committer doesn't really care. So, <laughs> 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 yeah, that's 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 so we actually do like seven or eight uh, operating systems. So we do uh, all, all instances, clearly. So we do SUSE, two flavors of SUSE, a bunch of the flavors of Ubuntu, like Xenial, besides whatever it is. Xenial, yeah, Xenial supported actually, right? Uh, CentOS, Fedora, Red Hat, yada, 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 right? So interestingly enough, thanks a lot for the great question, actually. It, it returns on the conscious system. We do support, I believe, uh, three different uh, platforms right now. So we support x86, the traditional one, or x64, whatever it's called. <coughs> then we support Power, by the way. So that's the only source of the big data, the new big data stuff in the world on the Power right now. And that's, again, a great combination between, between Canonical and Big Dog, because Canonical, I believe, is like one of the two that works on Power, right? So you move one. SUSE would be the other one, I guess. Uh, and uh, we actually do support, uh, so PPC64, I said, and uh, the other one we support is ARM. So we do support ARM. So it's uh, whatever, seven by three, so we effectively our deployment matrix is what, 21, 21 operating system. Give it answer to the question. <laughs> Uh, could you name one? For 
example, if you Q, it's a, it's a user interface. Yeah, it's right here. Yeah. Is it part of the package? Uh huh. Oh, okay. name another one. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I know a couple of components that are still not a part of the big top. Uh, I don't know, Apache Q is not there yet, and uh, Akimo is not there yet. Hadoop is not all totally replaced by Hadoop. Or all the features that Hadoop has. Hadoop is a project. Apache Hadoop is a project, right? So it's a parallel, scalable data processing system, right? Big Talk is a step step above that. Big Talk provides an environment and whatever framework and all the stuff I just talked about. Wait, I mean, it's very good. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> to 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 make it kind of consumable, right? So before Big Talk came about. It's, it's disgusting, actually. Really. I, I hold myself, you know, real strong to, to force myself to talk about this. But people were deploying big talk from the dark holes. Oh, by the way, it reminds me of something. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, it's an interesting story that the, the original version of the big talk, uh, big data charms, uh, were, were doing exactly that. So they were downloading the binary dark holes of the Apache releases and you know, expanding them. And, you know, stuff. But anyway. So, uh, <clears throat> Big Top is not replacing Hadoop, right? It's, it's a project to, to get all these things to hold the cast station, right? So all these sparks and ignites and it's not going to work yet. So I have uh, uh, this uh, pretty, cool, uh, pretty cool demo on the, on the YouTube where you can stand up a cluster of whatever the number of nodes, you know, whatever it is. Uh, using Big Top Docker provision, I would have this little thing where you can run a command uh, from the build system and get yourself a fully distributed, fully configured cluster uh, in container, Docker containers of the system, right? With all the components you want to have, and they will be like properly, you know, communicating with each other and stuff. So I have this demo um, where, like, I press the button, five minutes later, I get myself the loop and the kind of cluster, and I can run map reviews, in memory map reviews jobs at the 30x speed factor compared to the original. And you don't need to know anything, so you just need to press the button and run. Uh, but yeah, we, we don't replace it. We complement the whole system. So in fact, actually, why should people who contribute to Big Dog there and just do the cloud projects? So I'd like to know more about the onboarding process. Uh, in particular, is Big Dog limited to Apache projects, or we can have, have some other projects that it's not yet Apache? Mm -hmm. Can I contribute to Apache Big Top and make it part of the distribution? Yeah, the answer is yes, resounding yes. So uh, there is a Big Top 2524 which adds a uh, thing of the little on database of Big Top right So, which is not a Apache project, it's a Apache license project, but it's still owned by a few of the on the Big Top somewhere, and uh, uh, we just have the, the package and then Puppet and test already there, so we just need to commit essentially to the master key that will let you to stand up pretty long database in time, which is fairly complex thing to do. Yeah, so, so if you hate Spark or you don't like Scala or you, you know, couldn't care less for Hive, but you still need to do you know, transactional uh, processing in parallel on the cluster, pretty long to do. So, and we, we're thinking about having the uh, hackathon actually. Big data charter guys and some cubicle guys and ping pong guys and whoever else wants to join to effectively put this on on future so that people can enjoy the company. So yeah, completely anything you want. The only it's not even like an expressed concern, but I believe the only limitation here would be it has to be an open source project. We're not going to add Oracle server into until we open the open source. Anyway, so from my understanding, a lot of companies. It's a third strike, by the way. A lot of companies now make a lot of money from the fact that Hadoop is very hard to deploy. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah. It's not. Are, are you guys getting some pushback? 
from those companies? Because with, with the integration of YouTube, it's becoming more easy. Uh, how do you imagine the pushback from the companies? <laughs> what, what they can do? <laughs> they can shut down their project. project. <laughs> they can buy quotas. <laughs> See, what they can do. They will stop using us. <laughs> Interestingly enough, actually, uh, there are companies that are making the money on that, and they are using pieces of the big dog, the whole big dog, like MapR would be, would be a good example, so they're using a fourth version of the big dog, right? And uh, it's fine by anything. If somebody can make like 20 bucks out of my work, okay, fine. So if I can make 25 at the same time, I'm sure. <laughs> or even 50 kids over there. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, people, people do this. And, in fact, oh yeah, that's a good point. So there is there, there's a company that has been bought by SAP just just recently. Uh, I don't know the name the name of the company, but uh, for all the time they were in existence, the startup, or two years old startup, they were keep pitching. I, I I don't have a better word for it honestly. That the the way the big the big dog does the uh, deployment and configuration and legality of the PC. File system, right? So the package instruction is not. Is the wrong way to do it. This is the wrong way to do it. Absolutely wrong. Okay. So while they're using us, what more is using us? Google uses us, Amazon uses us. This time it's not up for 16 and a half people think it's wrong. Come over, come to the They have a company. 